Hey guys, this is Marianne Farley. Today we're going to be doing an atomic cat, which is based upon this little cutie here from the 1950s and 60s. These cats were real popular back then. This is a modern version that we'll be working on today. And um, what I'll be doing on, in my online school, artandsoulschool.net, is getting into a lot of the actual drawing of these cats and also how to get that drawing, which will be on uh, tissue paper, how to actually transfer it to a very busy background like this. Now, as you can see, I used a stencil and um, the Dilutions uh, spray inks to get this background going. And um, as you could see from that early image, that those mod uh, mid-century cats were always very jet black um, but what I'm I, I want to update the whole idea of it a little bit so here I'm using black gesso to color in the cat but as I'm going along I'm also blotting a little bit away now you can't see the drawing that is there and like I said I, 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 I developed a technique where I can get the drawing down first by drawing it on tracing paper. That way you, you can get the actual size and the scale. You can move it around for placement. And then I'll show you how to uh, transfer the image to this very busy background without having to do a lot of erasing. So, um, Okay, so as you can see, I am still working to get the, the image from behind to come through. And now I want to blend those colors. I, I don't want them to stay as sharp as they are imagistically because I, I want to get those atomic elements that you saw in our reference piece like the different stars and the half moons there's a whole slew of them anyway I got the white I blended it all with a very light coat of white gesso and this is the piece here that um, I ended up with and you could actually just go from there and um, I'll put a, a time signature in you could jump to the end if you want just to start putting in those uh, mid-century elements but my original goal for this or what the vision I had for this piece before it all went so wrong because really what we're going to look out at now before we get to the end is a lot of the mistakes I made and I think that might be useful for viewers to look at to you know not every painting goes perfectly and the vision I had for this was maybe to have like a, a sunset background um, that's why I started making the center of the painting much brighter with light coats of watery gesso here I'm using the Caran watercolor crayons to create um, a redder glow around around the sides um, and of course I'm, I'm messing up the the lines of the cat but that's as you can see it's easy enough to go back and fix and I I wasn't happy but what started to change my mind was when I started putting these light coats of white on the cat which to my eye seemed to make her glow I started with watercolor crayon um, just to create some light effects. I know initially I wanted those those flowers to come through from behind her, but I decided I wanted to go a little further with that. And here I'm, I'm experimenting with color. All of these things can be changed so easily. Again, I'm using the white watercolor crayon. Um, almost using it as a reverse shadow 
where normally, you know, you'd put something dark under her chin, and you can see I'm putting something light under her chin. This is a white, watery gesso, again, just building these layers, and I'm actually in love with the cat at this point. I'm, I'm very happy with her, and I think that's what kept me going, because I might, I might have just given up. Um, had sh she started uh, not looking so so cool the, to my eye anyway the way she does now I just I love how she's evolving now here's where I went south I I thought well if this is a sunset piece then we got to put some blue in the sky or whatever and oh god that just I could see that went wrong and um, to correct that, I, I said, well, let me try black instead. So here I'm putting black over the blue. And it's getting worse because it's clashing with the blackish gray cat that I have. Now I'm pulling out tissue paper and I'm thinking, oh, my God, how am I going to save this thing? Um, and I think here I just start getting a little more risky, which is when things tend to start to go better. I put down red over those dark colors, and I'm blending, I'm blending this acrylic paint with the golden um, glazing liquid. I, I start pulling some of the reddish orange onto her face and onto her body just to try to create some kind of balance and consistency it's it's not my uh, I, I'm not I'm nowhere near where I like it yet but it's in hindsight looking at it now it's it's maybe not as terrible as as I thought but um I decide to break up the edge by putting down the Tim Holtz uh, um, uh, antique tissue paper, which um, I'm not going to go over with acrylic because I, I want the images of the tissue paper to bleed through. I decide to put a little bit on her body. I'm gluing it down with um, the Liquitex matte medium and I'm using some additional uh, red tissue paper and ultimately here I'm going to take my uh, reddish um, reddish orange um, watercolor crayon and um, and then just go go around the edges just to try to make everything blend that's what I'm doing here now these are the Karen Dash watercolor crayons and I think pretty much um, at this point I'm I'm getting frustrated I in looking at it again in hindsight it's it's really not that bad but I was not happy at all I it just wasn't saying what I wanted it to say so here I'm going back into the cat and I'm bringing watercolor black watercolor crayon just to create more dimension in in her body and um, in the corners of her eyes there I'm again I'm, I'm using the watercolor crayon the black watercolor crayon just to give more dimension it's all just about creating watery layers to to get these effects now here with a watercolor pencil I start putting down my atomic elements and um, the great thing about using a white pencil to sketch things in or excuse me watercolor pencil to sketch things in is because when you don't like them it's if you don't like them it they're so easy to get rid of the, the tiniest bit of water almost even a dry brush and you can just get rid of these lines initially I started putting these elements on an angle and experimenting with them that way but as you can see I jumped ahead and I created them more all much more uh, vertically 
And I started painting them in a teal color, <laughs> which was, you know, my next kind of big blender aside from the black edges. And I can just clearly see this isn't going to work. I'm using the teal because that was a popular color back then, but it's really uh, the coolness of the color is clashing with the warmth of the background and um, here I start outlining the elements that I'm getting down and um, you know I'll go back and forth between outlining them with excuse me a really black say Posca marker and then whiting them out again and you know oh and here I, <laughs> I tried lightening up the teal Maybe I'm thinking, oh, maybe a lighter, a lighter blue will work. But again, the problem is not the blue. It, it's it's the the cool colors and the warm colors just not not working. So here I just go back. I white everything out. I redefine those images, and I decide to put a very watery coat of gesso over. The whole thing again now I'm just going for broke because I'm I'm not happy at all and as I I start doing this I I'm somewhat taken aback by how much I actually like it because the underpainting is coming through this very light watery coat of gesso um yeah and so again I I just go in and I start I start you know defining those images a little more and like I said they'll go that will go back and forth a few times as to how black the outline of them will be but ultimately I I decide on um you know a uh, sort of a, a pencil outline and and I do define these images more um, at art and soul school you can see them here they're like half moons and eight pointed stars and these lines with with the sort of the bolts or the dots on them um, I'll go through a number of them that I found um, at the course uh, in the real time in the real time course Anyway, I take a Posca pen here, and I again, oh my gosh, I'm just torturing myself. I just keep going over these things um, and then changing my mind and ultimately settling on um, a gray outline. Here I, I try olive green eyes, which normally would be fine, but my paintings I always like to have balance in my paintings and if I was going to have green eyes I would have to have green somewhere else in the painting and um, I was <laughs> I was pretty exhausted at this point here I'm just you know following the image that I just showed you how these half moons are you know connected with these lines that have these um, little balls on them um, one of the stars there I actually had it cut into her body which I thought connected the the background you know the elements in the background just just making her more more a part of of the whole thing um, here I I don't know I took some Tim Holtz tissue paper and made that the iris of her eyes. I just was shooting for the moon here. I had outlined her eyes, as, which I'm doing here with a colored pencil. And um, now I'm just trying to determine what color to make her eyes. I'm, I'm using a uh, chalk pastel to create even even more reflection of light which I just thinking is is looking beautiful um, I tried uh, making her eyes orange with a, a red 
nose here and I just, ugh, that, that is not working. So I just wipe them out. <laughs> the magic of time lapse, I just wipe them out and I draw, I decide I'm going to do an iris that is not going to hit the bottom of, of her eye. Here I define the outline of her eye with more uh, ch uh, chalk pastel. Um, and I start trying to copy the colors from behind her to make her eyes that color. Um, here I, I changed the saturation of the video just so you could see the pink a little bit better and you could see how that orange is coming through from behind. Um, and I just, I, I'm playing with different pinks. Um, at some point here, I, yeah, I start putting in highlights in the eyes. Not quite sure how much I want to cover up that, that pupil. Um, okay, I covered up the pupil. Okay. Um, yep, yeah, just, just keep working it and putting in the reflections, enhancing things with a um, Stabilo pencil, outlining, outlining the eyes with just a regular pencil and some colored pencils. Because um, as we know, our eyes are never just one color. They're, they're always a reflection of the different colors around us. I decide to give her more of a pinkish pinkish nose, which I think ultimately works better, more consistent with the colors in the painting. And I decide to give her, uh, you know, sort of trendy fashion cat's eyes, um, the way women used to wear mascara in the 60s. So um, I'm going in and I'm enhancing that. And then I'm using a white Posca pen to go over what I did with the colored pencil. I'm putting in um, more pink and just touching things up, just just smoothing out all of my lines. Really, just using a pencil. Sometimes that's that's the best thing, the best thing that you can use. Um, yeah, I'm outlining just with a regular pen there around her nose and going back in with a pink Posca pen. Here I'm using um, just a regular pencil, uh, colored pencil to create her whiskers, her eyelashes. I'm softening them with um, the chalk pastel. And um, yeah, again, just, just detailing just detailing the face and here we are we were we're coming up now to the finished product as you can see the colors are so different when it's a JPEG because for some reason the video process you even though you color correct you can't always get that very rich color that is in the actual painting so I am just so happy with how this came out, how if I had not gone through all of those mistakes, I don't think I ever would have thought to have arrived at something like this. So it's, you know, don't, don't always throw it out if you think it's going bad. It's, if there's something about it that you're still liking, hold on to that and just keep going. So anyway, please join us at the Art and Soul School Facebook group. And again, there will be additional classes to enhance this painting on artandsoulschool.net. So thank you so much for joining me. And I'll be seeing you in the next lesson. Okay, bye-bye.